To climb the dunes of Utah or Omaha today is quite literally child's play. It was not so in June of 1944. D-Day. After its conquest by the Nazis, France becomes one of the most heavily fortified areas in history which Adolf Hitler says will make Europe an impregnable fortress. The beaches and waters off them are heavily mined and booby-trapped and strung with obstacles. The men who will spearhead the invasion board the ships which will carry them to their long-awaited hour of decision. In file after file they come, in all the ports where the invasion fleet lies at anchor, moving up the gangplanks in a long, solemn shuffle whose cadence becomes the heartbeat of history. The eye of destiny is now on these men who board their vessels bringing only what they can carry on their backs and in their hearts. The great armada begins its ponderous move into the channel waters. With almost 5,000 seagoing vessels, the historic armada is the greatest ever assembled. The men who will actually be the first into France are still back on English soil. Paratroopers of the U.S. 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions and the British 6th Airborne Division are to jump behind enemy lines to secure the flanks of the invasion area. The midnight skies over Normandy are suddenly alive with the dark shapes of men who will bring the first fires of D-Day to Fortress Europe. An hour before the first troops are scheduled to hit the shore, a naval bombardment opens up on the enemy's coastal defenses. nausea and fear and tension. The trip to the beaches begins. At the spear tip of this historic seaborne attack are some 3,000 men, American, British, and Canadian troops, who will hit in the first wave. Behind them, the main body of ground forces will land in succeeding waves. is called Utah and Omaha, and Sword and Gold and Juno, they come ashore. On the murderous sands of Normandy and its rim of watery hell, they push against the gates of Fortress Europe and the fates of war and freedom await their performance. Enemy resistance varies in degree from beach to beach. But for every man there, the new world of Normandy is a world of private agony and chaos. And no man can see the broad design beyond it on a scale so epic that words written long ago by William Shakespeare could have been composed for the 6th of June, 1944. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand a tiptoe when this day is named. Three hours after the invasion begins, it is clear that the Allies have their foothold, however precarious, on a day which will forever be known as D-Day, who unlocked the gates of Fortress Europe so that a monstrous evil could be pursued 
and destroyed.